Hey, I just wanted to show you the Dream UV Hotspot UV technique. Uh, so the base principle is that you're going to have a texture that is laid out like that. And the, the principle about this, this texture is that it's based on a hotspot. So if I create a new plane here, put it here, um, hotspot texturing would be basically right um, having this, this texture on here and you're gonna add a loop cut alongside the edge and basically what this does is that this adds a sort of a variety of edges that are long and sharp and in terms of the ratio so you have one to one kind of like square one to one square of different sizes and what it will do is that it will try to automatically match the shape uh, so you need to make sure to have all of them, you know, nicely laid out there. So you, as you notice, every time you click, you need to click and then escape. Control R, click and then escape, and then it creates this nice gradation from, uh, you know, long to thin to one to one ratio. Uh, once you have that, you need to make sure to call this. Uh, new plane that you've just created, call it like Atlas or something, right? Atlas. Uh, and so now when you're working on an object, you can have this Dream UV add-on and this uh, hotspot button. And the hotspot is referencing the Atlas object. And so what it will do is when you click this button, it will take this shape that you have and try to UV match it to uh, something here. So let's get let's get the UV editor. So we see here, I click the hotspot button, and you see that it's cycling it in between different spots that it think are matching uh, on my texture sheet. Uh, and the thing that is pretty cool about that is that because it's all based on a, sort of like procedural uh, UVs, you could assign different materials. They share the same texture and it would still have those nice interesting edge effects so you can make uh you know i can decide to make uh all of these windows glass right but they will still have this glass kind of edge effect uh which i all encoded in the texture so if we look at the you know where on the uv space is it using it's still using here it does not change where it is uh but it all matches up because it's using the same structure so if I look into uh, my glass texture, I don't think I have it here. All right, I don't think I have it here, but um, there you go, metal gray painted. Okay, so this one, see this one doesn't even have a color, for example. It's just the base color, transmission, and it's the bump that does, uh, right? It's the bump, bump map that does most of the complexity. All right, uh, but here's where it gets interesting because you can use this uh, you can use this technique basically on any uh, arbitrary meshes. So you can see, right, that still works. Uh, what's interesting is as you get really, really small, um, it will still work, but it will basically take a smaller and smaller uh, texture. So if you have a really, really long stretch of mesh like this, uh, it's going to drop a little bit in resolution, but it's kind of cool because it's going to make it look uh, like you have a sort of consistent textile resolution across the thing. It has this nice edge effect uh, overall. And uh, you can apply this to like any large meshes or meshes that have a lot of things at once. Uh, and basically, uh, you know, you can go and decide, okay, I want this. And you see here, it creates an edge here. Uh, and this one can be, you know, a second island. Or you can decide all of these are part of the same thing, and you see uh, now it has a bigger area. Or you decide to do all of these at once, right, as part of a singular block, right? So you have a lot of options on how you want to cycle uh, these textures. But the thing that is really cool is in your game engine or, you know, in your shaders here, this is only one shader. And then, you know, I have a shader for red, so I just assign red, and I don't, you know, I don't need to move to uh, Substance Painter to make it work. 
Uh, you know, if I, I don't know, like anything I want to do, basically I can do it. All right, if I want to extrude those, if I now want to retexture that again and I want ni nice edge effects on the side, boom, right? Nice edge effects here. All right, so I hope that was a good demo of the technique and uh, I'll send you the link to get the Dream UV add-on. And again, the Dream UV add-on uh, only appears in edit mode. And uh, one of the cool thing is you can uh, add a quick favorite here. So the cool thing is I have this thing and I do here and then I have a, uh, you know, a shortcut. So I don't even click the interface anymore. I have a shortcut for it now. Uh, so that's one of the little cool things of this plugin. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a technique that has been used for a little bit in environment art, uh, but it has been introduced by uh, the Source Engine developers, so Source 2, to make uh, Alex the VR uh, new game. All right, hope that was helpful. See ya.